Section 9 of Aesop's Fables, a new translation. Written by Aesop, translated by V. S. Vernon Jones. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This section has been read by Rosalind Carlyle. The Horse and His Rider A young man, who fancied himself something of a horseman, mounted a horse which had not been properly broken in and was exceedingly difficult to control. No sooner did the horse feel his weight in the saddle than he bolted, and nothing would stop him. A friend of the rider's met him in the road in his headlong career and called out, Where are you off to in such a hurry? To which he, pointing to the horse, replied, I've no idea, ask him. The Goat and the Vine A goat was straying in a vineyard, and began to browse on the tender shoots of a vine which bore several fine bunches of grapes. What have I done to you, said the vine, that you should harm me thus? Isn't there grass enough for you to feed on? All the same, even if you eat up every leaf I have and leave me quite bare, I shall produce wine enough to pour over you when you are led to the altar to be sacrificed. The Two Pots Two pots, one of earthenware and the other of brass, were carried away down a river in a flood. The brazen pot urged his companion to keep close by his side, and he would protect him. The other thanked him, but begged him not to come near him on any account. For that, he said, is just what I am most afraid of. One touch from you, and I should be broken in pieces. The moral of the story is, equals make the best friends. The Old Hound A hound, who had served his master well for years, and had run down many a quarry in his time, began to lose his strength and speed owing to age. One day, when out hunting, his master started a powerful wild boar, and set the hound at him. The latter seized the beast by the ear, but his teeth were gone, and he could not retain his hold, so the boar escaped. His master began to scold him severely, but the hound interrupted him with these words, My well is as strong as ever, master, but my body is old and feeble. You ought to honour me for what I have been, instead of abusing me for what I am. The Clown and the Countryman A nobleman announced his intention of giving a public entertainment in the theatre, and offered splendid prizes to all who had any novelty to exhibit at the performance. The announcement attracted a crowd of conjurers, jugglers, and acrobats, and among the rest a clown very popular with the crowd, who let it be known that he was going to give an entirely new turn. When the day of the performance came, the theatre was filled from top to bottom, some time before the entertainment began. Several performers exhibited their tricks, and then the popular favourite came on, empty-handed and alone. At once there was a hush of expectation, and he, letting his head fall upon his breast, imitated the squeak of a pig to such perfection that the audience insisted on his producing the animal which they said he must have somewhere concealed about his person. He, however, convinced them that there was no pig there, and then the applause was deafening. Among the spectators was a countryman who disparaged the clown's performance and announced that he would give a much superior exhibition of the same trick on the following day. Again, the theatre was fell to overflowing, and again the clown gave his imitation amidst the cheers of the crowd. The countryman, meanwhile, before going on the stage, had secreted a young porker underneath his smock, and when the spectators derisively bade him to do better if he could, he gave it a pinch in the ear and made it squeal loudly. But they all with one voice shouted out that the clown's imitation was much more true to life. Thereupon he produced the pig from under his smock and said sarcastically, huh, There, that shows what sort of judges you are. The Lark and the Farmer 
A lark nested in a field of corn and was rearing her brood under cover of the ripening grain. One day, before the young were fully fledged, the farmer came to look at the crop, and, finding it yellowing fast, he said, I must send round word to my neighbours to come and help me reap this field. One of the young larks overheard him, and was very much frightened, and asked her mother whether they hadn't better move house at once. There's no hurry, replied she. A man who looks to his friends for help will take his time about a thing. In a few days the farmer came by again, and saw that the grain was overripe, and falling out of the ears upon the ground. Mm, I must put it off no longer, he said. This very day I'll hire the men, and set them to work at once. The lark heard him and said to her young, Come, my children, we must be off. He talks no more of his friends now, but is going to take things in hand himself. The moral of this story is, self-help is the best help. The Lion and the Ass A lion and an ass set up as partners and went a-hunting together. In course of time they came to a cave, in which there were a number of wild goats. The lion took up his stand at the mouth of the cave, and waited for them to come out, while the ass went inside and brayed for all he was worth in order to frighten them out into the open. The lion struck them down one by one as they appeared, and when the cave was empty, the ass came out and said, <laughs> Well, I scared them pretty well, didn't I? I should think you did, said the lion. Why, if I hadn't known you were an ass, I should have turned and run myself. The Prophet A prophet sat in the marketplace and told the fortunes of all who cared to engage his services. Suddenly there came running up one who told him that his house had been broken into by thieves, and that they had made off with everything they could lay hands upon. The prophet was up in a moment, and rushed off, tearing his hair and calling down curses on the miscreants. The bystanders were much amused, and one of them said, <laughs> Our friend professes to know what's going to happen to others, but it seems he's not clever enough to perceive what's in store for himself. The Hound and the Hare A young hound startled a hare, and when he caught her up, he would at one moment snap at her with his teeth, as though he were about to kill her, while at another he would let go his hold and frisk about her as if he were playing with another dog. At last the hare said, I wish you would show yourself in your true colours. If you are my friend, why do you bite me? If you are my enemy, why do you play with me? The moral of the story is, he is no friend who plays double. The Lion, the Mouse, and the Fox A lion was lying asleep at the mouth of his den when a mouse ran over his back and tickled him so that he woke up with a start and began looking about everywhere to see what it was that had disturbed him. A fox, who was looking on, thought he would have a great joke at the expense of the lion. So he said, Well, this is the first time I've seen a lion afraid of a mouse. Afraid of a mouse? said the lion testily. Not I. It's his bad manners I can't stand. The Trumpeter Taken Prisoner A trumpeter marched into battle in the vanguard of the army and put courage into his comrades by his warlike tunes. Being captured by the enemy, he begged for his life and said, do not put me to death, I have killed no one, indeed I have no weapons, but carry with me only my trumpet here. But his captors replied, That is only the more reason why we should take your life, for though you do not fight yourself, you stir up others to do so. The Wolf and the Crane A wolf once got a bone stuck in his throat. So he went to a crane and begged her to put her long bell down his throat and pull it out. I'll make it worth your while, he added. The crane did as she was asked and got the bone out quite easily. The wolf thanked her warmly and was just turning away when she cried, What about that bee of mine? Well, what about it? snapped the wolf, baring his teeth as he spoke. 
You can go about boasting that you want to put your head into a wolf's mouth and then get a bitten off. <laughs> what more do you want? The Eagle, the Cat, and the Wild Sow An eagle built her nest at the top of a high tree. A cat with her family occupied a hollow in the trunk halfway down, and a wild sow and her young took up their quarters at the foot. They might have got on very well as neighbours had it not been for the evil cunning of the cat. Climbing up to the eagle's nest, she said to the eagle, You and I are in the greatest possible danger. That dreadful creature, the sow, who is always to be seen grubbing away at the foot of the tree, means to uproot it, so that she may devour your family and mine at her ease. Having thus driven the eagle almost out of her senses with terror, the cat climbed down the tree and said to the sow, I must warn you against that dreadful bird, the eagle. She is only waiting for her chance to fly down and carry off one of your little pigs when you take them out to feed her brood with. She succeeded in frightening the sow as much as the eagle. Then she returned to her hole in the trunk, from which, feigning to be afraid, she never came forth by day. Only by night did she creep out unseen to procure food for her kittens. The eagle, meanwhile, was afraid to stir from her nest, and the sow dared not leave her home among the roots, so that in time both they and their families perished of hunger, and their dead bodies supplied the cat with ample food for her growing family. The Wolf and the Sheep A wolf was worried and badly bitten by dogs, and lay a long time for dead. By and by he began to revive, and, feeling very hungry, called out to a passing sheep, and said, would you kindly bring me some water from the stream close by? I can manage about meat if only I could get something to drink. But this sheep was no fool. I can quite understand, said he, that if I brought you the water, you would have no difficulty about the meat. Good morning. The Tunny Fish and the Dolphin a tunny fish was chased by a dolphin and splashed through the water at a great rate, but the dolphin gradually gained upon him and was just about to seize him when the force of the dolphin's flight carried the tunny onto a sandbank. In the heat of the chase, the dolphin followed him, and there they both lay out of the water and gasping for dear life. When the tunny saw that his enemy was doomed like himself, he said, I don't mind having to die now, for I see that he who is the cause of my death is about to share the same fate. End of section 9